Joining us now is uh, Congressman Alan West, former congressman from the great state of Florida, president and CEO of the National Center for Policy Analysis. And uh, of course, he is the author of Guardian of the Republic. And uh, Congressman, great to talk to you, sir. Uh, let's talk about Mitt Romney. Uh, what, were you surprised at all by his announcement? Well, people didn't know which way this was going to go. Uh, you know, you had that recent meeting with Jeb Bush. Now he's going to have the meeting with Chris Christie. So I think that uh, Governor Romney, even though the polls showed him at the top, uh, perhaps he was not getting the uh, the major type of response uh, from the 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 donor class, and then also uh, from some of his former uh, campaign staff who was who seem to be have gone over to other individuals. So I think he made a, a, a good decision, and I think that what he is looking to be, as you saw during the 2014 midterm election cycle, a, a senior statesman and someone that can really be a, a powerful political influencer. Who does this help? Who does this hurt? Because on the way out the, the door, uh, as many are saying, he uh, made some remarks. Uh, I want you to hear what he had to say, and uh, let's listen to this. I believe that one of our next generation of Republican leaders, one who may not be as well known as I am today, one who has not yet taken their message across the country, one who's just getting started, may well emerge as being better able to defeat the Democrat nominee. In fact, I expect and hope that to be the case. I feel that it's critical that America elect a conservative leader to become our next president. You know that I wanted to be that president. But I do not want to make it more difficult for someone else to emerge who may have a better chance of becoming that president. All right, so that's, uh, that's what he had to say. Uh, someone uh, not as well known as him, someone new, new generation. Uh, what, what is he trying to say there? Well, I think that, you, you know, that would be best for Mitt Romney to answer that rather than me trying to get inside his head. But there is no doubt that I believe that he's trying to set the conditions for future leadership in the Republican Party. And I think that's what he wants to try to uh, help to inspire, to influence, and to engage. Uh, and, and that's what I heard in those comments. Uh, it's very interesting he said, you know, that uh, a strong conservative, because we need to have someone that does, you know, create a, a clear delineation and separation from the progressive socialist uh, policy agenda that we have seen that is failing this country in the area of economics, energy, and also national security and foreign policy. So I think that he kind of threw out there a, a typecast. And, and let's see, you know, who will step up that kind of fits that, uh, that frame and that model that he just articulated in his uh, pre conference call. What do you think that dinner with Christie is going to be like? Uh, you think he'll say to Christie, <laughs> okay, why did you hug Obama? Why did you talk about yourself in the, uh, in the keynote speech <laughs> at the convention? And what the heck did you invite me to dinner for? <laughs> It's going to be very interesting. Uh, you know, you know that this is going to be about, you know, hey, I'd like for you to throw your support behind me, and you're going to have many different individuals, you know, potential uh, candidates for the nomination lining up to see if they can court that approval. But and I think that's why it was very interesting how he uh, laid out that typecast in his yeah. uh, conference call statement. So he's now the that now kind of like the elder statesman power broker, as you put it, right? Absolutely. That, that, that senior statesman. Uh, and you saw him do a lot of great things supporting House and Senate candidates all over the country in the 2014 election cycle. So, uh, you know, I, I think that that is a, is a good position to, uh, for him to be in right now. All right. When we come back, folks, we're going to talk about uh, with uh, uh, Alan, we're going to talk about the, uh, <laughs> the definition of terrorism that the administration won't call Taliban terrorists. We're going to talk about Netanyahu, and we're going to talk uh, more about uh, the current role that uh, uh, Alan West is uh, now uh, presiding over the National Center for Policy Analysis, his uh, brand new gig uh, down in uh, Dallas, Texas. All right, we're back with uh, former Congressman Alan West. And Alan, talk about the uh, the National Center for Policy Analysis, which you're now president and CEO of down in Texas. Tell the folks what, uh, what, what, they, uh, what you guys do. Yeah, absolutely. You can follow us at www.ncpa.org. It's a 31-year-old conservative free market uh, policy think tank uh, located down here in Dallas. Uh, health savings accounts, Roth IRAs, are policy uh, initiatives from the NCPA that have definitely proved to be uh, quite uh, 
quite providential and and uh, beneficial for the American people. So we continue to look at uh, policy analysis. Uh, some of the things that we looked at is the 529 plan that the president wanted to tax, and yeah. of course they backed off of that. Yep. So that was an, a target of opportunity. But uh, we have this new development, a tax analysis center, which will allow us to do dynamic analysis of uh, tax policies and tax proposals and, pol- and other fiscal type policies to really give that behavioral effect of the individual and also the market instead of that static uh, analysis that you get from the current CBO. So we're excited about Great. that. Great. Uh, www.ncpa.org. Everybody should check that out. All right. You know, you, you, you were on Greta a couple nights ago, and you're complaining about this outrageous um, uh, essay contest that uh, the Joint Chiefs uh, uh, came up with to, to praise the uh, King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia, who just died. Uh, you know, put that in the same bag, I guess, as the uh, White House on consecutive days, two different spokespeople saying that the Taliban are not terrorists. And they're not terrorists by their logic because they don't have any world domination uh, um, you know, plans. They just commit acts. Yeah. They're an armed insurgency. You, com- you combine that with the stance on Iran and, and, and everything. And, and, and what we found out now about Hillary and Libya, that the, the Washington Times uncovered these tapes that, that, uh, that C- Congressman Kucinich and, and people from the Pentagon went to speak to Gaddafi's son because they were afraid of yeah. what Hillary was. I mean, this is insanity, is it not? No, it is absolutely insanity, and it is all falling apart. You know, the, the thing is, where is the priority, you know, of this White House? And you started by talking about the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who should be worried about our military capability and capacity, not an essay writing contest on one of the most repressive regimes and countries in the world, and that's Saudi Arabia, and they don't share our values. So why would we want to have American children writing about, you know, the the, the king of Saudi Arabia when you had most of the 9-11 attackers from there, the Wahhabists are there, most of the folks that are fighting with al-Qaeda and ISIS uh, and, and their support are coming out of Saudi Arabia, as well as large financing to Islamic terrorism. The reason why the Obama administration cannot refer to the Taliban as a terrorist organization is because what would it look like that the Obama administration traded to get a deserter back for five terrorists? Uh, I mean, it just it just throws another you know lump of coal on an already very very hot burning fire. Right. So for them to try to explain that well the Taliban just operates in Afghanistan and the Pakistan Taliban is different from the Afghanistan Taliban. The bottom line is it's Islamic terrorism, it's jihadism, it's Islamic fascism, and it is all the same whether it's Hamas, Hezbollah. Abu Sayyaf in the Philippines, Jamaat al Islamia, uh, it, it does not matter. And that's where they fail to see this from a strategic perspective. They just see it from a political perspective. Right. Do, do you ever wonder where this is all going to end? You know, we, heard, we have reports of uh, a, a leader of the Muslim Brotherhood meeting uh, at the State Department or with, with the White House uh, to try to plot strategy to overthrow the Egyptian government. And then he goes back, he leaves that meeting, and he says, We're in a lifelong jihad against the Egyptian government. It makes you wonder what the heck went on at that meeting. Of course, we know that there are people, or we hear there are people in Israel on the ground uh, that are trying to overthrow or get uh, Netanyahu to lose his re-election. Uh, he's already done you-know-what to, uh, to uh, Libya. Uh, look what happened in Yemen with the, with the help of his friends from Iran. We got Hezbollah attacking Israel. I mean, my God! Well, this is what happens because weakness is enticing. Uh, for your enemy. Uh, and, and let us go back and remember, even in 2009, when President Obama went to speak in Egypt at the university there in Cairo, uh, he requested for the Muslim Brotherhood members to be front and center uh, for his speech. So, you know, th- there comes a time when we really have to honestly say, you know, whose side is President Obama on? Is he an Islamist sympathizer? And I think that if there's one thing that the House and Senate can do, they need to bring up a resolution to censure the president for some of these actions. Why do we have the Muslim Brotherhood in our State Department? Why does the president of the United States request for the Muslim Brotherhood to, to, to be there when he's given a speech? Why is there all this support for Mohammed Morsi but none for General al-Sisi? 
uh, because he is standing up against the brother. What happened in Libya? Why did we need to, you know, you know, dethrone Muammar Gaddafi and basically side with Islamist forces right. there? We, yeah. Why are we, you know, delaying all of these, you know, to put sanctions back on Iran? There have been three or four different times that they extended the negotiations. Congressman, that's why I love you. You're not afraid to say what a lot of a lot of people are thinking. Uh, Congressman, former Congressman, of course, uh, uh, Alan West. Thank you, sir.